The man you look up to loses everything, then you personally fail to stop him from killing the scumbag behind it. However, something surprising happens. In his grief, you see this man not descend further into despair, but actually use those feelings to do more. He gives himself, his name, all he had left to go further and make the world a better place. In fact, he literally stops all wars and you can see the results. But then your other colleagues show up. They don't understand anything. They see your hero as another despot who needs to be apprehended, despite all the times they've worked together. They refuse to listen to you. And thus, you got to pick a side. Guess what? Hal picked the wrong one. Hal Jordan is a character I have a very intimate and personal relationship with, in the sense that I grew up with Jon Stewart on TV and Kyle Rayner on the trading cards. So I feel nothing for this guy who, for my generation, just kind of came out of nowhere and we had to pretend like we cared about him as much as DC all of a sudden did. But John Lee G, in just as Hal Jordan, is a character I kind of love, and it's precisely because it did the opposite of what John Jeffs did. Instead of exonerating the character's crimes by saying he got possessed, what if he's forced to live with himself? That is a greater writing challenge that requires commitment and an uncomfortable amount of narrative sympathy. Hal's crimes are immense. He took the side of Superman during his war against Ganthet, resulting in the death of 200 Green Lanterns. Hal also wore a yellow ring himself when Ganthet took his, and finally, he got tricked by Sinestro, who killed Jon Stewart and blamed it on Guy, someone who's so loyal to Hal that he refused to fight back, whose last words are, Hal. You can still be the best of us before his arm was ripped off and he fell to his death. He dies with his eyes wide open. All his faith and loyalty was proven wrong. But at least his Hawaiian shirt is still intact. The question I want to pose is thus, why didn't Hal know better? How stupid can you be to be tricked by a man called Sinestro? To begin, let's figure out how does Hal think. Hal Jordan is a very conservative person. I'm not just saying that relative to his political history, but I mean psychologically in injustice. He's characterized as someone who tends to lean towards existing and familiar things. When Ollie was killed, Hal thinks of the time he, him, and Dinah went to a bar after he saved the world. And there's three immediate noticeable aspects to his personality. First, Hal is someone who's reluctant to go out, because Secondly, he'd rather go home and catch up on TV. And thirdly, it's revealed Hal only has short-term relationships every week, namely with Carol. He lives his life very predictably, where even things that are risky in it are controlled and turned into a routine, to the extent that as he hangs out with his friends, he spends most of his time repeating the same joke about how he feels out of place, because he just saved the world. It's banter, but it's also how he values himself. He puts the sense of service before his friends. As a result, Superman's turn to authoritarianism arguably appeals to Hal's pre-existing leanings towards familiarity and stability, especially if the opposition's appeal is mainly, well, they're your friends. Therefore, at Ollie's grave, he continues to stand with Superman, arguing that both the world is a better place and him killing Ollie was an accident. Dinah knows Hal isn't the kind of guy who changes. So, she has nothing else for him. You can't shame Hal. But you can guilt him. And yes, this is the bit where I talk about the distinction between the two. Shame is social. We feel it when we feel like we failed a standard that's been measured by others. Be it the shame of being a bad at your job or being a bad friend. But guilt is personal. It exists independent of the reaction of others. Thus, as Tyrone and Diona concluded, shame is about the entire self guilt about a specific behavior. However, since Hal takes pride in service, his loyalty to Superman and getting the job done as someone who just saved the world, it's created a shield against guilt. Because as long as he continues to make sense and appropriate his actions in the world under these parts of himself, he won't really change. An example is when Superman orders Hal to interfere with Congress when they try to protest by shutting down the government. Hal is hesitant, but he does so when Superman asserts that it's in fact his authority as the Green Lantern of the sector. So at Congress, he screams at how transparently corrupt they are and refuses to let anyone leave until the shutdown is stopped. As he argues, this is his duty as a Green Lantern, and he orders them to do theirs. Under Superman's leadership, Hal has an excuse to become prideful and blind. And this is precisely what Sinestro then manipulates. Within the big picture storytelling, Superman and Sinestro are not all that different in Injustice. Both start out as friends with Hal, and both use their powers to impose an authoritarian rule over their home planets. 
leading to a war with the Green Lanterns. As Sinestro explains back to Hal because he's too stupid, I have seen this before, Hal. You do not want to put a finger on the matter, don't want to say the word aloud, but that is what is troubling you. Beneath the practicality of this mission, I have seen worlds die before, because one man thought himself a saviour. I was that one man, and I brought devastation to my world. I was your friend too once. Therefore, the notion of Sinestro being on a path of redemption due to Superman's leadership, that's easier to believe than the notion of Superman becoming more like Sinestro. So when Sinestro does stuff like destroy the weapon the Guardians were after to try and use against Superman, which makes Superman happy because people are now safer without it, Hal feels like he's proven right. Sinestro isn't the same asshole anymore because Superman's greatness is leading him to redemption. He's a great man, period. Therefore, there's no shame to be felt when the man he's loyal to is rude to his boss, or when Sinestro's men corner Kilowog's men who are sent to arrest Superman, or the idea of the regime having their own superpowered police force, because if the Guardians can have one, why can't Superman? No one gets it, except for Jon Stewart, and he was then supposedly killed by Guy. Therefore, when finally something crazy happens, like Superman straight up murders Billy Batson in front of everyone, He's grown comfortable enough to rationalize it as a necessary casualty. Billy wasn't a criminal, he was a casualty of war. Acceptable losses. Acceptable? But in doing so, he knows he's really just making an excuse. What he's serving has become a contradiction to what he believes. It's not all for a better world. I let myself believe we were making things better. I'm done. We you have a death wish? There is no done. Maybe not for you. However, this blind loyalty is also what changes him. Superman, a version from another world, before all of this, arrives and tells Hal, Here's your chance to do what's right. I would take it. And that was all that was needed. Just the side of this better man reveals everything. The man he worships isn't the same man anymore. And he always knew that. Hal's just not the type of person to compromise. Especially when he knows there's no going back after what he's done. The shame and the guilt has finally hit him thus. Hal can see how completely he's failed his service. Therefore, during his trial, he doesn't put up a fight. He's guilty and that's that. But is there a future from all of this? The answer is simple. There is no redemption, but there's still tomorrow. In prison, the memory of Guy Gardner becomes Hal's only main company, a man to consistently remind him of his sins, but also there to help him process everything. It's kind of poetic, the man who died refusing to fight because he had so much faith in Hal, in death is there to continue that support. He makes Hal laugh. He's there to tell him the truth, like how his sorries won't bring him back. How he should punch Sinestro when he has the chance. However, none of this changes the fact that the person Hal hates the most is himself. A hatred so strong that he's able to wield a Red Lantern ring. But also, in using it, he's able to help the Green Lanterns and get a second chance to be of service again. After it's all over, the guy before he fades away, he asks Hal if he's looking for redemption, but Hal knows there isn't any. Guy then reassures him, he still has one more thing. That's tomorrow. Hal will never be free from his sins, from his crimes, from the lives he's ruined, and the good people who died. But he can still live a good life, making things right. And that's worth living for. Trying to make things right. I betrayed my core, my planet, and my friends. And that's the worst part. Could we ever, ever change this song?
So this video was actually supposed to come out after a Wonder Woman's Bloodlines video, but I was pretty displeased by how that one turned out, so I'm completely reworking that one, and as a result, this video got pushed forward. There's two more planned Injustice videos, one on Booster Gold's arc, and a very holistic examination of Injustice Batman, which explores his relationship with Clark and Damien and all the little intricacies that the comics kind of pose. Anyways, uh, special thanks to everyone on Patreon, you guys are awesome, thanks. <laughs>